Scientists have been hard at work for the past year to come up with a suite of tools to help experts make plans in order to mitigate the spread of COVID-19 and also to help the average person like you or me uh, learn how to protect ourselves. A lot of great work has been done in both of those areas, and also there's been a lot of absolute shit. Uh, Today, I'd like to talk a little bit about the latter. Specifically, I just saw this map via an LA Times article trumpeting the news that now you can see the COVID-19 risk anywhere in the country in real time. They even call out the fact that the map has been peer-reviewed. Wow, it must be really good then, right? Like... More data is always good and peer review is always good. So this is absolutely, without a doubt, a good thing. No, 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 no. Okay, so I will concede that the map is fascinating. It's the brainchild of a quantitative biologist at Georgia Tech who then brought on an interactive computing professor at the same university to build it. It takes the known number of coronavirus cases in a particular county, multiplies it by 10 because our testing and tracing in the United States is basically dog shit, and then uh, figures out the chance that an event with X number of people in it Uh, in that location might have at least one attendee who is positive with COVID-19. The LA Times says that the interactive computer professor who built the map uh, said she hoped more people would use the COVID-19 risk assessment planning tool to help them make decisions about how many local friends and family to invite to their celebrations, and whether traveling to different parts of the country or even within the same state is worth the risk. My mind is blown at how incredibly irresponsible this is. Just, it's so, so stupid. Let me detail just a few of the reasons why. Number one, this map isn't even accurate. Uh, Yes, it's updated every day with new data, but you can't just multiply the number of known cases by 10 and assume close enough. The United States is an abject failure when it comes to testing and tracing. The simple fact is that we have no idea how many Americans have or have had COVID-19. While 220,000 Americans were known to have died of COVID-19 by the start of October, compared to the same period last year, America had 300,000 excess deaths. So we don't even know the true number of people who have died due to COVID. We absolutely cannot claim to know how many people have been infected. A seroprevalence study done by the CDC this past summer found that infections were 6 to 24 times greater than what we currently knew. That's a huge fucking span. You can't look at figures like 6 to 24 times and say, "Eh, let's just call it an even 10 and then build a tool that you expect people to use to make extremely important decisions about whether they're going to help spread a pandemic or not. Secondly, this map assumes that any event within a county only includes people from that county. For those outside of the United States who don't have counties, uh, counties are basically ways that we partition our states. My county of Alameda is fairly large, but it only takes me about 20 minutes to drive to any of three other counties. And if you give me an hour, I can hit seven. My geographically closest friends are located across three counties. If we all got together, you would need to take the data from all of those places in order to accurately calculate the risk. That is, if you had accurate data in the first place, which you don't. Third, even if all of the data was accurate, more information is not always a good thing for the average person. This is something I've talked about in the past, particularly regarding ventures like 23andMe. Genetic testing is fascinating. I did it and I don't regret doing it, but it's not for everyone. You can't just tell the average person that they have a a 10% increased risk in breast cancer or Alzheimer's and expect them to fully understand their actual versus relative risk, the impact of environmental versus genetic factors, and the benefits of simply not panicking because there's not much you can do about it. You're going to unnecessarily 
necessarily worry a lot of people. And also, you're going to let a bunch of other people think that they never have anything to worry about uh, for a particular disease because they have good genes. Like, fuck it, who needs a mammogram? I don't have that specific mutation. I'm good. And that's dangerous. And that's why this tool is dangerous too, even if the data was correct. You can't just tell people that if they go to a 15-person indoor Thanksgiving dinner, there's, say, a 5% chance that one of the other partygoers will be positive with coronavirus. With no context, 5%, that sounds super low. But if 20 people use that tool and decide 5% isn't that big of a deal, now you have a really, really good chance that at least one of those 15-person dinners is going to happen with a COVID-19 patient. And eating inside with people who you aren't quarantined with is one of the easiest ways to spread COVID-19. So congratulations, you may have just started an outbreak. Because after Thanksgiving is Friendsgiving, so each of those 15 people may decide to take another 5% risk, because after all, what's 5%? That's nothing. And now you have new people being exposed. And after Friendsgiving is the white elephant, and that's another 5%, but still, such a tiny number. And then there's Christmas, and then there's New Year's. And that, my friends, is why this is a pandemic. It spreads exponentially. And that's why no matter what your personal risk is, uh, the safe, sane, healthy, compassionate thing to do for all of humanity is to not travel to any other counties or any other states, to not attend any holiday dinners. Stay the fuck home.